What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kim and if you are returning, thank you so much. But today we're going to be talking about Alexis Sharkey. Now this is an unsolved case. I don't typically do unsolved cases, nor do I particularly like unsolved cases. I like that closure, but for whatever reason, I don't know, I just felt compelled to tell this story about Alexis. I just find it so interesting and it's kind of went stagnant for a little while until Alexis's story with the information that we have today. So Alexis went missing and made the headlines Black Friday or soon after Black Friday 2020, but Black Friday is when she was last heard from. She went missing after leaving her apartment in Texas and the last person that she had communication with was her husband who we'll talk about. His name is Tom. Alexis was a very liked person. From all standards that I've seen, Alexis was a Instagram influencer. She had about 20,000 followers and she, she just seemed to be a very positive, liked person. Since the beginning, there has been a lot of speculation, theories, uh, stories that have come to light. It's pretty amazing how much information came out since Alexis has gone missing. So who was Alexis Sharkey? Well, I'm glad you asked. I will leave all the links to what I'm talking about today down in the description box so you can check out everything for yourself. I don't claim to have more information than that. I have my own thoughts, but this is unsolved. So just know that this video is just reporting on the news that I have and everybody is innocent until proven guilty. Alexis was a 26 year old and by most standards, like I mentioned, she had um, her 20,000 followers on Instagram. So she was an Instagram influencer and she was an entrepreneur as well. Uh, she was born in Northwestern Pennsylvania. She had a very loving family. She had two sisters. She went to college after high school, did very well in college. Uh, she was in their biology program. Alexis, was the full package. She was beautiful, she was smart, she was likable. After college, she decided to work at a bar called Twin Peaks. It was kind of her in-between in between jobs. But by having this job, she had this freedom to travel and Alexis loved to travel. She was very adventurous. She would document her travels on Instagram, she seemed to have a very interesting life. She then started working for a company called Monate, where she was selling natural hair care products. Uh, Monate is a MLM, and so she was selling the products, but she was also recruiting, because of course that's what you do with an ML MLM, whether however you feel about MLMs, but that's what she did, and she was very successful at it. Uh, she seemed to be on the rise of the ranks. And then she meets a guy named Tom Sharkey in 2019. She was in, introduced to Tom from a friend that she had worked with at the bar Twin Peaks. The story of Tom is kind of a mystery. You know, like what does Tom do for a living? What type of person he was? I know that there's been some reports that he had been married before and divorced. He had grown children, but Alexis and Tom did not have any children together. Uh, the public opinion on Tom has not been very positive. In fact, he himself has said that he is getting death threats. Um, so I don't think things are going very well for Tom now, but he is still a mystery. Looking at the pictures from Instagram, they look like a happy couple going on road trips and just warm embraces. They looked like they were truly in love. Tom was very muscular and tall. He was several years older than Alexis. In fact, 
she was 26, he was 49, so about a 23 year age gap. Alexis and Tom end up getting married and then they move to Houston, Texas in January of 2020 and that's where they moved into their new apartment. So jumping forward to Thanksgiving 2020, Tom, her husband, states that they had a Thanksgiving breakfast, which has raised a lot of eyebrows because what is a Thanksgiving breakfast? Is this a thing? Like, it sounds good. I'm a foodie, so that sounds amazing. Have a Thanksgiving breakfast and then have a Thanksgiving dinner. But a lot of people are challenging his statement that they had a breakfast Thanksgiving because it's just not heard of, it's not common. But people do different things. I don't know, maybe they did share a meal. Maybe it was just a bowl of cereal, but they called it Thanksgiving breakfast, or at least in Tom's eyes, it was a Thanksgiving breakfast. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's what he claims. They would not spend Thanksgiving though together. Alexis had made plans with her friend. Her name is Tanya Ricardo, and she ended up spending Thanksgiving with her and her family, and that's exactly what she did. Alexis and Tanya met through an app, which is Bumble BFF. I'd never heard of Bumble BFF before, but apparently it's an app. It's not a dating app. It's not a app. It's just an app, to, a platonic app to meet friends. Alexis was new to the area, uh, so she used this app to connect with other people. And I bet that was good for her business as well, because that's what she does. She recruits people. Not saying that she went into it with that, but you know, just an added incentive. Tanya only had very nice things to say about Alexis, that she was fun, she was outgoing, she was easy to get along with. It appeared as Tanya and Alexis were getting quite close as best friends. So Alexis spends Thanksgiving with Tanya and not Tom. The day went well, but on Black Friday, it was radio silence from Alexis. This is not typical for Alexis. She was a big influencer, and part of her job was to show off the products. Black Friday, a big shopping day for her to just go silent is a missed opportunity. Now, she was active until 6 p.m., but after 6 p.m. is when she went quiet. Tanya, her friend, is noticed that Friday night. While Tanya was talking to her until 6 p.m., they were making plans for Saturday. They were going to have a girls' movie night or movie day, you know, because it was supposed to be a rainy day. So they're like, ah, oh, let's just all get together, have some wine, watch movies. Fun. That sounds like a lot of fun to me. Now, during this time, Tanya is you know, a little bit like, huh, I wonder why she's not responding on that Friday night into Saturday morning. Well, on a, another note, um, it was reported by Alexis's mom that Alexis left Friday night because she had an argument. No t details about the argument, no details about who she was arguing with, but that there was just an argument. Tom says that there was not an argument with him. He told reporters and he's making it very public. Tom says there was not an argument, at least not with him, but he told her she wasn't going to drive under the influence. He said it wasn't an argument. She understood me and I understood her. And then Alexis left the house that Friday. He doesn't know where she's going, who she's going with. She just left and there was no argument. Like wouldn't a casual person just say, hey, you know, who are you going out with? Or, you know, you're kind of drunk. Are you okay? Or no, n n he has no information. Sir, I have questions. So Saturday, Saturday morning comes along. Uh, Tanya sends a text to this group of women that are supposed to get together for movie night. When typically Tanya sends out her messages, Alexis is the first to respond. She was known to be glued to her phone, you know, taking pictures, responding, and, uh, you know, part of her job, part of Instagram. So she was always with her phone. And Tanya was surprised that she did not respond. So I don't know if Alexis is anything like me, but if I decide last minute I don't want to do something, then, you know, I can flake. 
like I try to respond and say, hey, you know, I'm just not feeling good or whatever it is. But when Alexis made plans, she always followed through with her plans. She wasn't one to cancel. She wasn't one to flake. And so it was concerning very early for Tanya. Right. Um, she moved here in January and we met, I mean, within weeks of her moving here. Um, we... I was kind of looking for a new group of friends and I brought this group of friend to get of this group of friends together and she showed up to this dinner. And since that day, I mean, she's just been part of our circle. She seemed bubbly and full of life to me. I didn't know her. How would you describe her? Exactly like you did. She was always happy, always had a smile on her face. A lot of people looked up to her. She was just very, very positive always positive, always very knowledgeable, knew a lot about what was going on, um, loved, loved uh, being an influencer, as you can see, and sharing, you know, tips and tricks, tips and tricks about makeup and hair and fashion. If we needed her for anything to do with that, she was the girl to go to for sure. How did you meet her? We actually met on Bumble BFF. She was looking for friends when you met her. Yeah, she was looking for, for friends, and she definitely found people that really, really loved her, truly. And so, kind of tell, like, when was the last time you talked to her? She was actually at my house on Thanksgiving. We spent Thanksgiving together with my family, um, and then we had made plans Friday to get together Saturday, because um, it was rainy, we were going to watch movies all day. And the last time I spoke to her was Friday around six o'clock was when my last text message was sent to her. PM. And did it go unresponded? Like, did you, like, did you hear from her? That was period the end. Okay. You thought everything was okay. Yeah. I thought everything was fine. And then the next morning I woke up really early. I sent a text to the group of girls. We have a shared chat and said, who's coming over, you know, movie day or whatever. Alexis would have been the first person to respond. I mean, if, if I'm going to jail, Alexis is the first person I'm calling or texting because I know she's going to answer within seconds. So I started getting a little concerned and I said, this isn't normal, this isn't normal. And so all the girls kind of got together and we were like, okay, well, when was the last time you talked to her? You know, when was the last time you talked to her? And they all said around 6 p.m. Uh, Friday. And what was that conversation about, the last text message you sent her? Um, the last conversation I had with her, uh, she was asking me what I was doing Friday night. And I said, uh, well, my mom's in town from Mexico, so I'm going to stay home with her. And then we said, okay, love you, whatever. And, and that was it. So all the friends are meeting at Tanya's house as they had planned. And they're like growing concerned because she's not answering to anybody. So they decide to get in the car and go to Tanya's house just to make sure she's okay. I hope my friends do that for me. I don't have any friends, but if I had friends, I would hope that they would do that for me. They banged on the door several times. Alexis was a no-show. Tom was a no-show. Nobody was answering the door. They were growing concerned as the hours passed. Apparently, Tanya waited outside for a bit just to see if either of them, Tom or Alexis, would come home or they'd come home together. So, she, yeah, she waited outside a couple hours. She was that concerned. And mind you, in this time, there's no social media either. They're, they're constantly checking that. And during this time, she's contemplating, do I call her mom? Do I call her mom? She just wasn't sure if she should give her a call if it's nothing, if they just left and went somewhere and so she just waited and then just a quick side note there still hasn't been any reports that i could find that says where tom was during this time if he was in the house was he sleeping or um did he leave somewhere like where was he so at about 8 30 in the morning a sanitation worker 
said that he's seen some feet sticking out of the brush on the side of the road while he was just doing his route. He described what he saw looked like a mannequin-like figure on the side of the road. He wasn't sure what it was and he was afraid to approach it. So he, call, he ended up calling his supervisor and then his supervisor came and of course it was not a mannequin. It was the naked body of Alexis Sharkey. Because at this point, it's only 8.30 on Saturday, she hadn't been reported missing. Well, maybe she should have because she didn't come home the Friday night, but she hadn't been reported. And so she was classified as a Jane Doe at the medical examiner's office. And she was found, Alexis's body was found about eight miles away from her home. And it's a straight shot from her apartment to this place. The medical examiner believes that she was dumped there the evening prior her body was found. Saturday, later on in the evening, they don't know uh, that Alexis has been found because she's classified as a Jane Doe. So Saturday evening, Tanya and uh, Tom, because they're now connected, end up calling Alexis's mom to see if she's heard anything from her and that she had been missing for 24 hours at this point. Alexis's mom is the one that ended up calling the police. She lives in Pennsylvania and she ends up calling the police. So she's reported missing, it's Saturday. Now it's Sunday, okay? Nothing has came up. Tom decides that he's going to go to the medical examiner's office because apparently he saw on the news reports that a girl that was found and they classified as a Jane Doe. So he was just checking to see if it was Alexis. So I'm trying to envision this in my head, right? How, how did this go? Tom sees this news report, he grabs his keys, Googles the address to the medical examiner's office, and asks to see the body. I mean, he walks up to the front desk and says, you have a lady here, my wife's missing. I mean, I don't know how that conversation, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around that. It's just bizarre. It, me, I would be holding on to hope, but everybody's different. Everybody reacts different. In my mind, I would probably have called maybe just to say, hey, you know, I don't know. That. Anyways, okay, so now are some rumors. And of course you can't believe everything that you hear. There was some reports that Alexis was not happy in the marriage and she was considering divorce. Um, Tom denies any claims, but says that Alexis was not happy. And he has a direct quote where he said, she wasn't happy, she was stressed. I would cuddle her to try to make her strong. She was an amazing woman. My wife was an amazing woman. She really was. There's always other sides to everything. I was the one cuddling her. I was building her back up. I don't need to set the record straight. I'll let it play out the way it is. I know what my life was with my wife. In my opinion, allegedly, off the record, in my own words, don't sue me. It's just fucking weird. I don't know. I don't know how people act. It's just weird to me. I cuddled her to make her stronger. I was the one holding and cuddling her to make her stronger. <laughs> I'm not a touchy person, touchy-feely person, but that just sounds weird. <laughs> when did cuddling ever solve anybody's problems? Maybe a short term, but long term is another story. So it could be innocent. It just sounds weird. Innocent until proven guilty, am I right? Okay, let's move on. So more uh, allegations were made from Alexis's friends that said Alexis had been in an argument with Tom and he had choked her in the past. She expressed concern. It, apparently he had choked her to the point where she passed out on the bathroom floor. It's super scary. Wow, 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 wow. So in the beginning, reporters are asking Alexis's mom what she thought about Tom. And she was very poised and almost downright a sweetheart. She says she was going to let the cops do what the cops do 
and she was staying in contact with Tom and Tom was cooperating within the investigation. Well, since then, he stopped cooperating. Alexis's mom had to fight to get her body back home so she could bury her freaking daughter. Um, Tom had primary custody as being the husband and just wasn't doing anything. This poor lady just wants to bury her daughter and Tom's over here twiddling his freaking thumbs. She finally did get her daughter back to be able to plan a funeral and bury her daughter. The medical examiner's office actually had to help her, her mother, Alexis's mother, to change the next of kin so that she could get her transferred back so she could be buried with her family. I didn't think I was going to get her and I actually given up hope when all of a sudden the forensics lab called me. Alexis Sharkey's mom says she didn't think she'd get to see her daughter again as one week turned into two with no ability to plan a funeral. Lexi's husband, Thomas Sharkey, was listed as next of kin. As her husband, he would have primary custody um, of, of what, deter what happened with her. Um, and he had said all along that he was willing to let her come home. Stacy Robinault wanted to bring her daughter home for a funeral in her hometown in Pennsylvania. Lexi had only lived in Houston for about a year, but she couldn't do anything without next of kin approval. And she says Tom stopped cooperating. It just was a very strange, I'd almost call it fight to get her. Tom Sharkey hasn't responded to Fox 26's interview requests. After two weeks with no action from Tom, the medical examiner changed next of kin custody to Lexi's mom, and on Friday, they finally had a viewing. So by now, the autopsy has been completed, and it came back that Alexis's death is ruled as a homicide, and it was due to strangulation. I couldn't find anything about the toxology report and no one has been identified as a person of interest that I've seen. Naturally, the husband, Tom, is going to be the first person that they look at. That's just how it always is and a lot of statistics show that it's more likely that it is your husband or wife. But for now, nobody's been arrested. I haven't seen any reports in the last month. I'm going to be glued to my computer and looking for updates on this case, trust me. I think I know who did it. Also, the Gannon Stout case, that I don't really want to do these unsolved early ones before a person is convicted or know about the trial or have more information. It just kind of stinks because it's like, this has no ending. I hate that. And so I, I probably won't do, in, do a video on Gannon. Not now. Not until after the trial. That is so interesting. That is a super interesting case. So I'll do a video once that trial ends. But I will keep you up to date on Alexis just because I'm so invested now. I'll leave the hotline number below in the comments if you have any information please report it. There was some reports that Alexis had some mushrooms in her place that she did. She does micro dosing. She went to school for biology. I don't know. I think she likes that herbal, natural, whatever. I don't honestly think that has anything to do with it. I mean, it may have something to do with it if Tom wasn't micro dosing and he flipped out on drugs. It could be. I don't know. But I, I don't. I don't see. It was definitely a homicide. It had nothing to do with drugs. But I am curious of what her toxology came back because Tom claimed that she left intoxicated. So was her blood alcohol corroborating what he said? But we don't have any information on that yet. So I'll keep you posted. I wish I had more information. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I love you all to death, and I will see you in my next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.